Hey what's up guys, my name is Echerno, welcome back to my Game Engine series. So, last time we took a look at key and mouse codes and just setting up all that stuff so that we can have actual key codes and mouse codes defined inside Hazel and not reliant on other libraries such as GLFW. Definitely check out that video if you haven't already. And also last time I asked you guys the question of where we should proceed next. And there were a few responses and the top comment was basically this. Um, so the I'm GUI docking sounds really nice and after that I feel like a good path might be rendering and then like rendering potential, uh, rendering related tasks like that. ECS, serialization, level format. I mostly agree with this um, and in fact I'll definitely do the rendering, um, like definitely that step I think will be good to do next. Um, as far as like ECS and serialization, I might actually do them in the, in like the reverse kind of order. So serialization first, then ECS, um, level format till scripting. Yeah, pretty much good. Um, so we're going to pretty much follow this roadmap, uh, starting with rendering. So, and then the I'm GUI kind of docking and, and windowing like the I'm GUI viewports branches, all that I've been looking at, which I think I mentioned last time is something that I really want to do as well. So, um, that's probably what's going to happen. But instead of doing I'm, Go I'm GUI docking today, which we could do, we're just going to kind of get started with rendering, I think. Um, and specifically the mathematics kind of part of that. So rendering is very much reliant on maths. Like you have to have a math library to do pretty much anything, right? I mean, if you want to draw something on the screen, you know, we're dealing with a potentially a 2D or a 3D renderer. So we need to have you know, two component or three component vectors, right? Four component vectors usually as well, right? And matrices for transforms and all of that kind of stuff. So you need a math library there. Obviously you don't need to have that. You could just have like a float array or something and then just send that buffer to the GPU and then render where, wherever you want because that's what it kind of comes down to in the end. But I mean, since we are not kind of talking about weird ways to do things and we actually want to set up something good here, we need to have a math library. So with maths, um, there are quite a quite a number of rather good maths libraries. I mean, honestly, in pretty much every project that I've worked on in my life professionally, it, they always have their own. Um, so we could go ahead and just write our own math library, but see, here's the problem. Writing a math library by yourself, technically speaking, just to get the bare minimum up and running is actually not that difficult. Um, you need to have a basic set of classes, such as, you know, your basic vector classes, right? So a two component, three component, four component vector. You need to have a three by three matrix, a four by four matrix, maybe like a ray class as well with like an origin and a direction. That's pretty useful. Um, quaternions, uh, what else? This is just going off the top of my head, by the way. I think that's probably about it. And obviously like, like a bunch of utility functions as well. And obviously all the vector classes will include things like dot and cross product, as well as a component wise multiplication. All of that stuff, you can write yourself pretty easily, like in a day, maybe less, right? If it's your first time, then maybe it'll take you a whole day, but it's really not that difficult. Totally easy to do, to, to do by yourself. But if you want to write a good math library, that's where it becomes more difficult because in order for maths to be fast and in order to actually write it in a good way, you need to take advantage of SIMD essentially, which is single instruction, multiple data. So essentially, what you want to do is use like 128 bit wide registers on your CPU to actually do that kind of four by four measures multiplication or like dot product or all of those kind of math operations, because you can actually do them in a single CPU instruction instead of having to load registers with num with variables and multiply them kind of one float at a time. In order to do kind of SSE or AVX or neon or whatever platform you're on, in order to actually use those extensions, um, SSE being like the Intel on streaming SIMD extensions. In order to, to use all of that, you need to either write assembly code, which no one really does. Like to be honest, in everything I've worked on, no one's ever, used, ever really done it that way, but it is possible to do it that way. The other way to do it is by using compiler intrinsics. Now, if you're using compiler intrinsics, obviously like, I mean, that definition alone means that it's per compiler. So Clang uses different ones than MSVC does, right? Different kind of, you know, variable names, different functions, all of that stuff. Like for example, in MSVCs underscore underscore M128, that's the kind of variable type that holds that 128 bit wide register um, variable, right? That's the type. So, and that's, that's intrinsic to the MSVC compiler. So because we have this problem of using all of this stuff, you have to individually write SSE code essentially, or SIMD code I'll say, for all major platforms on compilers and even if you were doing it for one compiler, it's still difficult. And it's still like something that you need to learn how to do. And this series is not about 
how that works. I mean, I might make some videos just for C++ in the future to do with that kind of stuff because I know it's come up a few times in comments. Um, but because of basically because of SIMD and because that's the proper way to write a math library and really I wouldn't consider a math library that didn't support that to be honest because why like that's just going to be too slow in a large scale kind of good high performance game engine like Hazel like that's because that's one of the goals for Hazel. Um, because of that you know, unless you kind of have the time to do that, which we don't, um, then you should just use a library which supports that. So we're going to use something called GLM, which is kind of the OpenGL math library. Let's just go over to this computer here. So this is what it is. It's called OpenGL Mathematics. Now it's a C++ math library for graphics programming. I mean, look, it's called OpenGL Maths. Um, and it says it's kind of based on GLSL. So it supports everything that GLSL does. You can see the syntax is very much like GLSL. So for example, it says mat4, you know, you have your kind of vec3 instead of like float3, which is what HLSL would, um, would be like. So it is kind of based a lot on OpenGL, but you have to realize that this has nothing to do with OpenGL. Like it, it's not tied to OpenGL at all, right? It's just a math library that's syntactically based on OpenGL and probably the ordering of like their memory layout for matrices is probably the same as well. Um, but it's not limited to GLSL features anyway, right? And it's got things like quaternions, which don't exist in GLSL. Um, and I'm sure that in fact, it's made out of templates. So I'm sure that you could probably change the memory order if you even wanted to. Basically, in my experience, it's quite a good math library. And if we take a look at the Git repository, um, you'll see that they actually do have, you know, SIMD stuff, right? So, I mean, I have like matrix, for example, you know, look, like this is like the um, SSC kind of stuff that I was talking about that MSVC has, right? Like they've got all this kind of SSC code um, in here, which again, you can see it's quite complicated. It's quite hard to write, right? Um, so they've got all of that stuff, which is what we are looking for. Um, and it's just a really easy to use math library. I've used it before. I quite like it. Um, it's really my go-to math library. I mean, I, I'd either use this or potentially the DirectX math library, which is very good, but that's kind of you know, limited to DirectX in some form. I mean, you can use it with everything, but anyway, we're not gonna get into that. We're gonna be using GLM to begin with, maybe sometime in the future, if I have like a spare month or so in my life, four years from now or whatever, I might be like, you know what, let's just write our own math library and I'll do a little series on that or whatever. That'll be fun. I wouldn't mind doing that if I had the time, but I don't. Um, and, every, and this does everything we need to do. So on one hand, and you can see, I mean, it does AVX2 and stuff, which is um, AMD's kind of stuff. It does, it, it's great, right? It, you should use it. So we're gonna use this. Um, so we're gonna go to the releases. We could add this as a Git submodule. Um, we probably should, to be honest. So yeah, let, let's add it as a Git submodule. Um, so I'll just open this. We'll go to Hazel. Um, you can see this episode is pretty much not prepared because um, you guys love it when I do stuff live. Uh, let's just do a git status. Everything's fine. So we'll just do git submodule add. And in fact, I don't even remember what the commands are. So we can add a name and then a repository, I think. Um, or at least it has a uh, add and then path repository, repository and then path. So we'll do um, this. Uh, we don't, by the way, we don't need premake or anything like that for this at all um, because it's a header only library. So that's quite, that makes it quite nice. And then we'll add it into Hazel vendor. And I guess Hazel vendor, Hazel vendor, and then just GLM. And how do they, it's, they pretty much write it lowercase all the time. So we will also make it lowercase. So I'll say ha Hazel vendor GLM, okay? So we're gonna add that, okay? And now that that's done, um, if we just, we literally can just like refresh this and you'll see GLM appears over here in our solution view. Um, we can include everything we kind of need into here. Uh, we really just need to include GLM. I mean, like you don't need to do much at all. So I'm just gonna right click and hit include. I actually shouldn't do that though because we are using premake. Um, but the thing is we don't need to include it at all to be completely fair because yeah. I, I do want to add an include path. Let's just wait for Visual Studio to start responding again. Okay, it's good now. Um, so we could, like, if we just look at the premake file quickly. Um, I mean, I do want to add it as an include directory uh, to like Hazel and also to Sandbox. Um, so 
you know, we could do, uh, what do we have? Include directory. Yeah. I guess we kind of are putting all our dependencies here, so I will put it here. So GLM, and then I think that's it because then we can do GLM slash GLM or whatever that we need to do. Um, and I think that's probably good. Um, so we'll just do include directory uh, GLM. All right, and then we can do the same thing for the include directories into sandbox. That should just work. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't. Uh, so it's in Hazel vendor GLM. That looks good to me. Um, and then if we rerun, oh, but we probably don't want to include, oh, but this isn't including it in the project. If we want to include it in the project, you, you have to add it as like one of these files that we just add. Um, the reason like, I don't, I'm not sure if I really want to do that. Um, because then they'll all kind of appear actually in the project when you search and when you do Alt Shift O for Visual Assist, for example. Um, but then again, like we do have everything else here, obviously, like all this stuff from, um, well, it's from GLM now because I included it by right clicking, but if it wasn't in there, it wouldn't appear there. So I'm not sure if we want all that because it does clutter everything up and we probably won't need to look at it very often. Um, but if you wanted to, uh, you can just add it into the files into um, Hazel, and then obviously it would be there. So just as an example, because um, some people might be interested in this, um, we can just do, you know, project name, which is Hazel, and then vendor, and then GLM, and then GLM, for example. And then that would include everything that I just did here, okay? So let's rerun that and see what happens. Generate projects. <clears throat> Okay, so that's done. If I reload the solution now, you'll see that we have um, vendor, GLM, all of this stuff is excluded as you can see, but um, this stuff actually is also excluded, so that's wonderful. Maybe I messed up a path here. So that's inside Hazel, vendor, GLM, GLM. So what on earth did I do? Let's take a look. Um, so we had project name, vendor, GLM, GLM. Oh, well, obviously I need to actually like include the files that I want. Um, cause you can't just include a directory like that. Um, now what I wanted to say, okay, so they're all HPP files. Um, and I think that's really it. I don't think there are any other, I mean, there's inline files as well. So we'll include those. INL. Um, yeah, that's probably it. They don't seem to use header files or CPP files because, yep. Yeah, okay, cool. So let's rerun. Generate projects, done, reload, and then we should hopefully see them included now um, in here, and you can see they are, okay, great. So now obviously they will show up kind of in here as part of um, our open file and solution and all that. Um, and that's really it. I mean, I think we set up an include directory, so we can probably test it out by trying to, you know, include um, GLM slash like GLM, right? And if you look at the, uh, sample here that kind of did all of this stuff. Did we include it in sandbox or not? That's what I want to know. Um, cause I forgot. So let's look at this. Yeah, we did actually. So we, that, that should be accessible through the sandbox app. So maybe let's just try that demo. Um, we'll go over here. We'll grab pretty much this entire code. Um, we'll just paste it into, uh, sandbox app.cpp just like that. Um, we'll hit control F7 to just build that file. And then if it builds successfully, then we know everything's worked. Um, and you can see it does, right? Lots of warnings. We will address these warnings soon, by the way, I promise. But um, if you scroll down to the very bottom, I don't know if you can see, but you can see one succeeded, zero failed. So that did in fact work, okay? And then if we, um, I don't know if we like really wanted to, I guess we could uh, go over here into well, example layer, for example, um, and then do, what's, what even is this code? translation five and like why not a rotation vector um, of 0.5, let's just say. All right, and then that returns something. Um, and then we can probably try and log it. Um, I don't know if there's a, there's probably no logging functions for this, um, but let's just uh, stick a breakpoint here, hit F5 to compile all of this code. And then if we hit F10, um, you should see we have a camera with a bunch of 
values over here that are inside our matrix and it looks pretty good to me. All right, cool. Um, and <laughs> this is almost a bit hard to read because it kind of aliases a lot of these things. So X and R are the same variable and I guess so is S. Um, so we have kind of ST something else. I don't know. We have XYZW and we have like RGBA and then we also have um, RSTQ. Okay, so, you, oh, sorry, STPQ, it seems. Um, so we have a lot of different kind of aliases for the same variables, just in case we're dealing with colors or we're dealing with texture coordinates or we're dealing with, um, you know, just positions, X, Y, Z. So GL, uh, GLM kind of gives us that. But anyway, you can see that works fine. I'm gonna delete this example. You can try it out for yourselves if you want to. Um, but otherwise, that's really how simple it is to include a header-only library, um, and we can use it everywhere now. I would like to add things like logging functions to it so that we can just do something like H said, um, you know, H said trace, and then like give it like a map four or something like that, right? And actually have it have it trace that properly. Um, so to do that, we kind of need to do basically the same thing that we did in event. We need to decide how we actually want to present that data because it is a four by four matrix. Um, and then we have to do basically what we did with all these events, um, which I think was just, um, you know, having something like this, having a two string function, which uh, then eventually was called, I think event calls that. Um, yeah, we have this operator, which is what uh, our logging library, speed log or SPD log looks for. Um, and then we just simply actually log that matrix there. So if this is the case for an event, obviously we could add something like this in the GLM name, like we could add some somewhere anyway. We could add this function somewhere, um, which takes in like a GLM type like this one and actually logs it in its kind of format. Um, and then that way we could have that printing. So that's, that's something I want to do in the future. Uh, and then also I really want to add an I'm GUI kind of display component, I guess, um, for these math types so that we can easily, for example, see a matrix and also manipulate a matrix just by looking at it um, in an I'm GUI kind of window, because that's going to be really useful when we start having to deal with graphics programming and debugging all of that. Because next time we're going to probably rewrite, um, or not rewrite, but I'm going to put in that docking, I'm GUI docking and also uh, viewports implementation that I talked about, being able to drag windows outside of our, our own Hazel window and all of that, which I've already got running in the Hazel development branch. Um, probably gonna do that next time. And then after that, we're gonna start planning our actual renderer and start implementing the renderer into Hazel. So that is kind of the plan. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge thank you as always to everyone who makes this possible. The series would not be here without you guys, so thank you so much for your continued support. If you wanna jump ahead and see what we're kind of up to, because there's already a renderer implemented, there's already like a render command queue, there's already a um, the IAM GUI docking stuff and or the IAM GUI being able to drag in, like it's called viewports, being able to drag it outside into different windows and all of that stuff. That stuff is already in the Hazel development branch. So if you wanna take a look at that code right now, you can just by helping to support the series on Patreon. Um, yeah, so next time we're gonna take a look at this I'm GUI thing. It's gonna be probably not too much work, but it's interesting because we're kind of going back a little bit on our approach in favor of something that is, in my opinion, a bit more like just stronger and better in the long run. Um, and that's just by kind of reducing divergence, I guess, from the actual I'm GUI development, which we don't want to spend too much time changing and adapting to work with Hazel. We just wanna be able to kind of, you know, drag and drop it into Hazel and then just run right? Because that's kind of what I'm going, like, lets us do if we set it up in a certain way. So I want to take advantage of that. And we'll talk a lot more about that next time. So I won't kind of, won't make this video longer by talking about it now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you next time. Goodbye.